All right, my name's Thiet, and now it's time for the new Header Knights of Slanesh Battle Tome review. And uh, we're going to go through three main areas. One, going to have a look at the hardware. Two, going to have a look at the points changes, and that's where I think most of the actual discussion is going to be. And three, then have a look at key changes um, and what that might include as well. So first of all, we get some new dice as always. Picked out six here, of course I've picked out six. Um, nice marble effect on them. We've got again for the six uh, symbol of Slanesh, just like with the Daughters of Cain, so uh, you know a shift away from having skulls as the one now. Uh, maybe that was just felt too confusing, as I said. Uh, so it is now just normal dice, and you get a special symbol. It is a six, um, which for Slanesh is generally very good, especially when you are attacking. So that's the dice. They work out pretty well. Now, uh, we've also got, unlike with the Daughters of Cain, some new War Scroll cards. Very nice as well. Always useful. Really dislike the fact that they are limited edition. Now, in terms of the Battle Tomes, um, you see there. The new battle tome is, of course, significantly thicker. Um, but in terms of the, the changes I want to go over, I mean, of course, there's, there's new units being added, so that makes a certain amount of sense. Points changes is not as clear cut as with the Daughters of Cain. Daughters of Cain basically received fairly widespread points reductions. And again, I want to touch on this in a discussion video that I talked about then that's going to be coming out later this week. Head and Knights of Slash, it's more of a mixed bag. Now with the Doors of Cain, the only points increases came when you took max blocks of infantry, say for, or just max blocks units. So, you know, a full unit of Sisters of Slaughter or a full unit of Blood Sisters would cost you more. But the, but where individual units um, have uh, have changed at all, it was a points reduction. Head and Knights of Slanesh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Now, there's a little bit of a discussion on the Facebook group for the, for the gaming club I attend when I can attend it, which is not at the moment during lockdown. Um, and there was someone there who were thinking, oh no, all the points have gone up. And I was going, no, no actually, it's all, it's come down. Here's the, the reality of the fact. Now, if I have a little count about where the differences are, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven units where the points has increased. And then there's one, two, three, four where it's been reduced. Well, you're a bit outnumbered there. That's eleven gone up to four reduced. But overall, it's a points reduction. And the way, the reason I say that is if you look at actual competitive lists, they are cheaper now. So if we look at what's gone up very quickly, so Bladebringer, whether on Exalted Chariot, Hellflayer or Seeker Chariot has gone up. Exalted Chariot or Seeker Chariot gone up by 30 points, on a Hellflayer by 20 points. Infernal Enraptures has gone up by 10 points. Lord of Pain has gone up by 30 points. Uh, the Mask has gone up by 10 points. Vice Leader has gone up by the Herald of Slanesh, gone up by 10 points. An Exalted Chariot up by 10. Hell Striders with Claw Spears has gone up by 40. I mean, they were a very good unit. Um, Hell Striders with Hell Scourge has gone up by 50, which is a bit weird because the Claw Spears I thought were more useful, but anyway. Um, and they were the same points before, but they're now more expensive. Seeker Chariots up by 10, Seekers up by 30. Now, let me go through the reductions before I explain, first of all, why overall you can look at it as a points reduction, but also why many people will see it as a points increase, as if it weren't obvious enough. Reductions, Keeper of Secrets down by 40 points. Shalaxi Hellbane down by 50 points. Fiends down by 10 points. Uh, Hellflay, although that's not relevant to what I'm gonna say, down by 10 points as well. Now here's the situation. If you look at a competitive list, what have you got in it? You've got Keepers of Secrets, you've got Fiends. They've all been reduced in points. Do you really have chariots flying around? Not really, not really. And to try and drive the point home, I mean, Head and Knights of Slanesh are not, have not been a bad army in terms of performing in tournaments. They're not absolutely top tier. But I went, around, I went to Goonhammer to find a couple of 
uh, modified uh, lists that are done well in tournaments. So we've come up with a couple. These, at the time they were used in the tournaments, would have been 2,000 points. Now, in actual fact, each one would have come down slightly by a few points with the 2020 General's Handbook, but they came down also with the new points changer. So I'm going to go first one first, which is based on Silesk. Um, so it included Silesk, Two Keepers of Secrets, and Shalaxi Hellbane, which, you know, is, is not uncommon to see in a competitive list. It also included the Contorted Epitome, and then four units of five Hell Striders with Claw Spears. Now, at the time, that would have been 2,000 points. With the General's Handbook changes, I think that would have come to 1960. Now, if you look at it now, it would come to 1990. So, it's technically more points than, um, than would have been the case last year after the handbook. But bear in mind, we won't have had very many tournaments take place in that time. So it still worked out cheaper than the last time there was a proper tournament season. But then onto another list. So three Keepers of Secrets, the Contorted Epitome, the Infernal Enrapturous, ten uh, three units of 10 Demonettes, and five Hell Striders with Claw Spears under command points. So that actually came in at 1950. Now, with the General's Handbook, that was reduced a bit and came in at 1980 points. But with the new points values, you take that list and it comes to 1900. So, you know, 1900, I mean, you, you could for that, get rid of your command points, you've now got 150 spare, get yourself the, um, Sybarite Battalion, because that's 150. Plonk all your Keepers of Secrets, your Contorted Epitome and your Infernal Raptures into that battalion. And what you will then do is have exactly the same list for 2,000 points. You'll still get your extra command point because you've now got a battalion. And instead of it being, what, uh, nine drops, it will now be five as well. Um, so that's what I mean. Now, I can understand why some people look at their list and go, oh, it's really expensive. Because if you've based your army on the cost effective, um, you know, starting set for Slanesh, which includes chariots, you're likely to have had several of those boxes and have yourself several chariots. Yeah, you've been stung. As well as seekers, if your army consists of demonettes and chariots and seekers, yeah, it's costing more. But that's not the most competitive list either. And I know that not everyone plays a competitive list, especially in a gaming club, you play what you like, and yet you'll have seen that the points value go up, but it's ultimately points values are designed for competitive play, match play. Um, it has overall come down a bit. Not as much as with Daughters of Cain, but then you can also argue there's a, there's a take home here as well. So. In terms of things that are uh, in, in sort of favor there, we'll go over some sort of changes. Now, the big change is in terms of depravity points. So depravity points are what you acquire in order to get uh, summoned units. And the general depravity point acquisition used to be you got a depravity point if one of your head and eye heroes caused wounds or mortal wounds that didn't kill the model or if those Hedonite heroes took such wounds. Now it's different. They're actually harder to get, but the summoned units also cost less. So the general one comes from each of your Hedonite units, not just heroes, any unit, Hedonites of Slash unit in your army, at the end of the battle shock phase, and this isn't your battle shock phase, at the end of the battle shock phase, if they've taken a wound or mortal wound, or just have fewer models than it started with that turn, you get a depravity point. And in terms of the depravity points you get from your choice of army host, they are all, all a little different now, but the same general theme. And again, you don't, it tends to be you get one uh, or D3 as opposed to like, you know, as it was before. Um, they've also, you know, in terms of uh, depravity points as well, I'm gonna go over changes to spells, but they have also removed the greater demon spell that let you gain depravity points. So you will have fewer depravity points, but you don't need as many. For example, if we go to uh, the uh, thing in here, which covers depravity points, 
You used to need 30 for a Keeper of Secrets or a unit of 30 Demonettes, now you need 12. Okay, um, so you need far fewer. So for the minimum one, to get five Seekers or say 10 Demonettes, you need 6 Depravity Points. If you uh, think about that, so, and again, this is a little bit like corn actually, in that with corn you're, you're encouraged to have lots of small units rather than bigger units because you get points, summoning points for corn by having units destroyed. Could be your units, could be your opponent's units. Well, with this one, your depravity points don't come from, and it is depraved, they don't come from inflicting damage on your opponent, it comes from taking damage. So having lots of small, cheapish units that'll take the odd wound here or there, um, you know, at the end of each battle shock phase, so that's two per battle round, it's gonna have a look at this, you're getting a depravity point. You could easily have enough depravity points for a Keeper of Secrets in, in battle round three. So, you know, and again, your opponent's gonna have some extra thinking to do. You've, 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 with this way of dealing with depravity points, you've set your opponent a, a problem because they have to, I mean, tactically, you may anyway want to, um, you know, focus on a particular unit, but you, you know, if you make sure all of those units, and then the thing is with Head Knights of Sinesh, you've got the speed to do it, make them all cause a problem, and your opponent will then have an issue in making sure that they don't give you too many depravity points. It's a little bit like with Disciples of Sinch, not casting a spell just because, you know, you have to consider to yourself, do I really want to cast this spell? Is it useful? Because I'm giving them, if I get it off, I'm giving them a summoning point. You've got a similar thing now with, with Slanesh. Um, that being said, in terms of the host, I will also say that the additional points do seem rather hard to get as God Seekers or Invaders. Uh, this is disappointing to me because I look at Pretenders and go, yeah, I could go for Pretenders. And I also like some of the Pretenders command traits. I'm thinking, oh, do you know what? If I was just looking at this, from a gaming point of view, I'm thinking, yeah, I like, I like the look of pretenders here. Um, but they're essentially traitors to Slanesh. I don't really like them. What I may do is I, I, I may be a double agent. I might just pretend to be a pretender. But anyway, in terms of all the changes, locus of diversion has changed. And I don't just mean from the book, obviously that was FAQ'd anyway. Um, it, its effect is different. So it no longer makes a unit attack last now. It just stops it piling in. So it's no longer the frustration against enemy heroes, it's more annoyance against um, large units because it prevents them piling in and getting more attacks in. Euphoric Killers remains the same, so hit sixes to hit um, explode in exactly the same way. Now in terms of spells, there are some differences. So Lash of Slanesh, which is the classic draw line and every unit under it could be in for a hard time, it's a four plus rather than automatic. Uh, now it doesn't affect Slanesh units. So you can draw that line over your own army with impunity. Uh, there is a clarification in Phantasmagoria. The spell does the same thing, but it notes, whereas it used to just say, you apply this uh, bravery reduction and that was it. It's like, what, for the whole game? Uh, now it clarifies that it uh, lasts until your next hero phase. Uh, Born of Damnation is the best change because the casting value has gone down from five to four and it's the healing spell for, for like demons, demon casters, and it automatically heals D3. Before it would heal one wound, but if you got a 10 plus on your cast, then it would be D3. Now it's always D3, so that's good. Um, Song of Secrets, which allowed you to gain depravity points, as I said, has been gone. That has been replaced by a spell that lets you cast a fly. Um, Progeny of Damnation, which is the heal spell for mortals, has had its casting value reduce, reduced from seven to five, uh, otherwise seems to be unchanged. Um, Slothful Stupor, which stops an enemy hero running in charging or using command abilities, has had the casting value increased from seven to eight. So you might wanna think before taking that one. I mean, it's sometimes of niche use anyway, and going to a casting value of eight, you might think, well, do you know what, there's some actually really good Slanesh spells, maybe we don't take that. Dark Delusions, uh, which has a chance to debuff enemy units, had its casting value reduced from five to four. I mean, that's sort of fair enough, because that's also quite, I mean, reducing, you know, that unit's ability to hit by one is nice, but it's a bravery check effectively. Sometimes, you know, some units are gonna be good, sometimes not so good. And then finally, Hell Shriek has been replaced with Judgment of Excess. 
It sort of does a similar thing. It does mortal wounds on an enemy unit, but the Hell Shriek used to do that. It's like roll a die for each model in the unit for every five up, it takes a mortal wound. You know, it's fairly standard. You get quite a few armies with something like that. Now it's just one mortal wound for every five models in the unit. Um, you know, same, same casting value of five, which works out, you know, not too bad. Uh, really, you know, for a largest unit, he's still going to do, you know, the right amount of wounds you would expect. Um, now, the Fane of Slanesh, which is the faction scenery, doesn't return depravity points anymore if you summon a unit in range of it. Other than that, it's exactly the same. And then, you know, there are some extra battalion choices to reflect the fact that you've got now a significantly expanded number of mortal head knights of Slanesh. So it's really been fleshed out now. Um, but the only thing I do want to notice, so I mentioned before the Supreme Sybarites, as in how you could usefully use that in the list that I talked about before. So in that battalion, basically, it's a battalion for three to six Hedda Knights of Slanish Heroes. And the special ability is you roll a d6 at the start of each of your hero phases. If the result is equal to or less than the number of heroes in the battalion on the battlefield, you get an extra command point. Okay, that's nifty, that sounds decent. For 150 points, you know what? When you consider that a command point is valued at 50 points, um, if you've got a decent number of heroes, if you've got four or five heroes, you've got a reasonable chance of getting an extra couple of command points out of that, which if that happens, then already you've got your three command points, it's paid for itself. In addition, you've got fewer drops and you've got an extra relic. So yeah, great, fantastic. However, if you have a pretender's army, and now I'm thinking of a pretender's army, it says that this battalion changes from three to six heroes to one hero. This makes no sense. It renders it completely useless, doesn't it? So now what's happening is you're paying 150 points for an extra command point, which only would cost you 50 points, and an artifact, fair enough, but you don't get any fewer drops in deployment because it's only like a battalion of one thing, and almost no chance of getting the extra command point because you've literally got a roll of one the only way to get your extra command point. Why not just say that pretenders can't take the battalion? Madness. You'd be better off just buying yourself three command points and doing without the artifact. Um, but anyway, though that's my sort of look at it. As I say, the most uh, interesting thing was from the points values point of view, which I am gonna to touch again on a general discussion about points values looking ahead towards third edition anyway. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, I'll see you later.